Here's a fun little table runner that I think you'll enjoy making. It starts out like a blooming nine patch where you have a square and then a nine patch and then a square. But instead of having piece blocks in this position, I've just added solid triangles. This is a great project for beginners who are interested in learning about strip piecing, sewing on the diagonal, and adding these setting triangles. This is also a great project of practice machine quilting by stitching in the ditch and preparing your quilt for binding. I'm not quite finished with this other sample here, but I thought you'd like to see what happens when you pick fabrics that are more close in color and value. You can download the supply list along with copies of the other handouts at learnhowtoquilt.com or you can click on the links below. You'll need to choose three different fabrics for this table runner, one, two, and three. I usually choose a fabric with a print for number two, and then for fabric number one, I like to pick one of those colors that I find in that print, and then for fabric number three, I like to choose another color that I find in that print. But any three fabrics will do. Best part of this pattern is that no matter what you choose, it always ends up looking good. To get a more blended look, as seen in this blue runner, you'll want to choose prints that share colors and value. If you'd like more information about choosing fabric for a blooming nine patch, you can check out the introduction to this video. I've left the links below. I usually like to use a different backing fabric so I can kind of make it reversible, but I really like this print that I used on the front, so I used the same print as fabric number two on the back. Make sure all your fabrics been pressed before cutting. From fabric number one, you'll cut three five inch squares and then three two inch strips, 44 or 45 inches long. From fabric number two, you'll cut 12 five inch squares and then three strips, 2 inches by 44, 45 inches. Since I needed so many of these squares from fabric number 2, I cut 2 strips 5 inches by 44, 45 inches and then cut 5 inch sections off. You'll end up with some extra fabric at the end, but your cutting will go much faster. From fabric number 3, cut 3 7 and 5 8 inch squares and then cut them on both diagonals. Cut two four and a quarter inch squares and then cut it just on one diagonal. These are going to be your setting triangles around the outside edge. These half square triangles have the straighter grain on the outside edges and they'll go in the corner here. These quarter square triangles also have the straight of grain on the outside edge and they'll be placed on the sides. You'll be making these nine patch blocks. There are lots of ways to do this, but today we're going to be using strip piecing. If you want to learn more about sewing nine patch blocks, we have a number of videos. I'll leave the links below. You'll be making two strip sets. One strip set will be fabric number one, two, and then fabric number one. And the other strip set will be fabric number two, fabric number one, and then fabric number two. Pick up two strips, put right sides together, and sew a quarter inch seam. After sewing these two together, I press towards the dark. Then you can add the next strip. When the strips are sewn together, the next step is to cut these sections. You'll need 16 from this set and 8 from this set. Line up your strip set on your cutting board, trim off your end, and then cut every two inches. You'll end up with some leftover fabric, but I like to save this because I, I usually end up finding another project that I can use it in. Each of these sections should be 2 inches by 5 inches, but you might end up with some that aren't quite 5 inches like this one. So don't panic. Often it has to do with your pressing. So if you notice, see where I press there? Let me take this back and repress it, and that's much better. To make a nine patch block, you're going to take one from this pile and two from this pile. You start off by putting right sides together and these seams should butt up against each other. 
Let me pull this back and you'll see that they sort of go right in. They'll fit in right next to each other. And the same is going to be true over on this side. Now you can pin that in place and sew your quarter inch seam. I've sewed that with a quarter inch and pressed. And now I'm ready to add this one. Put right sides together. Those seams should line up. Take it over to the sewing machine and stitch. And here's my nine patch. It should measure about five inch square and I can see I need to maybe press this. But that's pretty close. You'll need eight of these. Lay out your blocks on a table or a design wall. First start with the three center squares. Add the eight nine patch blocks around those squares. The squares cut from fabric number two go next. Then add the four corner triangles. And then fill in with the quarter square triangles. To make this quilt, you'll be sewing in diagonal rows. I've separated the first two rows so you can better see what I'm talking about. I like to work on just one to two rows at a time, as these diagonals can get confusing. Put right sides together and pin or clip the side to be sewn. Make sure the corners line up. Notice you'll get these little ears when you sew the triangles to the squares. Stitch with quarter inch seams. Press the seam towards the squares and return to the layout. Sew the other two sections in this row. Put right sides together and stitch. Always press towards the squares, away from the nine patch blocks and triangles. Notice you'll get these little ears when you sew the triangles to the squares. You can cut those off now or wait till later. Sew the next row. Put right sides together. Notice the corner triangle on the top right. When sewing the corner triangles to the square, you'll need to find the midpoint of each. I've folded my triangle in half, I've folded my square in half, and now I'm going to match those midpoints. You'll have triangle ears on both ends. Pin and then stitch. Return this to the layout and then finish sewing the blocks together in that row. Continue sewing each row until they all have been completed. Now you're ready to sew all the rows together. Start in the corner and put right sides together. Match the midpoints of the triangle and the square and then stitch. Press and trim off the little ears. Return the piece to the board and then put right sides together. Notice that there's more little ears pointing out on each side and the side edges don't match up. When sewing these diagonal rows together, you have to focus on matching the seams in each row rather than the edges. I'd like to move this over to the table now because it's easier to match seams and pin. The seams should nestle up against each other. Pin across, stitch, and then trim the ears. Bring it back to the board and continue adding the rest of the rows in this manner. When all the rows have been sewn together, you want to press and then trim off those little ears on the edges. To make this quilt sandwich, I cut the backing a little bit larger all the way around. I did the same with the batting and then I layered all three. I'm going to machine quilt this by stitching in the ditch. So I need to base this using safety pins. Start in the middle, go all the way through to the backing, and pin. I like to pin about every two to three inches apart, making sure to avoid the lines where I'm going to be stitching. This quilt is now ready for machine quilting. I like to plan my quilting with the least amount of starts and stops, and I'm if I start stitching in the ditch here and then go down and make these turns, I can completely quilt this with only one start and one stop. I like to keep this plan nearby so I can refer to it if needed. I'll be using my walking foot to machine quilt this, but this is such a small project that you can probably get by just using a regular foot as long as you've done a good job of pin basting. I like to use a little bit longer stitch length when I'm machine quilting. On this machine, I've set that at 3.0. I want to start a little bit before this top. Let me put that down. I don't back stitch because 
when I put the binding on, that'll keep all those stitches in place. Use your hands as sort of an embroidery hoop and stitch. Make sure when you stop, your needle is in the down position. Now my machine has a setting that I can pu push and the needle will always end up down. But if your machine doesn't have that, just be aware that you want that needle down when you stop. Now I'm stitching right in this seam here. Because of the way I pressed, there's what I call a hill and a valley. And you want that your needle to go right alongside of that hill as you stitch. When you come to an intersection, you want to slow down because there's a lot of bulk there and it'll sometimes cause your needle to jump. Remember to stop with your needle down, reposition your hand, sort of like an embroidery hoop, and continue stitching. After I finish quilting, I like to stitch around the edge with about oh, an eighth of an inch seam to keep the fabric in place when I trim. This stitching won't show as the binding will eventually cover it up. Next, trim around the edges. I cut three two and a half inch strips for binding and then sewed this to the quilt. If you'd like more information about finishing the quilt, check out our videos under Beginner Basics, Finishing the Quilt. You'll find the links below. I also like to use this pattern as a border. Just start off with more blocks in the center or a large open area. Links to making this is listed below. Hope you get a chance to make one of these runners or try a larger version. Either way, it's a fun way to learn some beginner skills. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions and or concerns, please email me at ann at learnhowtoquilt.com or post in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Over the next few months, I'll be adding some new projects for beginners. On the second Thursday of the month, you'll get a video for a table runner that features one or more beginner skills. On the fourth Thursday of the month, I'll be hosting a pattern review for beginners. I've found some fun patterns, like this elephant quilt pattern, that I think you'll like. In the weeks between, I'll be giving instructions and free patterns for more easy quilts and small projects. Hope you'll join us.